thousand people lives in the old town today and every year less and less people are permanently living in the old town there's a very low percentage of buildings that has an elevator senior citizens are moving out because it's too hard to climb two three floors and it's not a younger couple that moves in who does a law firm an architect company uh, private businesses so it gets a bit deserted after 6 p.m and on the left side once more the church of nobility no divine services but most of sweden kings are buried in that church and when we're going to turn right some of you can see it in front but i'll wait for the traffic lights to switch we have the house of nobility and there will be a statue of a king standing with a scepter a long beard that's gustav vasa and by the way vase in swedish means bundle of wheat or sheaf of wheat after you harvest the land you tie it in a bundle and you have a vase if you've been to ikea and by the way the real name for ikea is ingvar kamprat el mahut arnerud so who will buy furnitures with such a long name so these are just the initial i k e a they sometimes have a crisp bread called waza crisp bread and now you know what it means sheaf of wheat so we just passed the house of nobility and now you're going to see a white mansion on the left side which is actually the supreme court or as we call it in swedish bundeska palatset An outer guest, an important spot for those who would like to go shopping. This is exactly the spot where the modern pedestrian street on the left side with those hanging red flowers meets with the old town zigzag pedestrian street on the right. So you have the Queen Street on the left and the Eastern Long Street on the right. And you can also see now again the House of Parliament on the left side, which is on an island of its own. Now, with all respect to this royal palace, the problem is there's no green parts. I mean, there's only a few green trees that are located between two wings. But every time our queen wanted to play with her two kids, she had to call a driver, a bodyguard, and wait for at least an hour or two for them to have a car available and she had enough she said this is not safe for our kids they should go out whenever they want and play and there's no green areas around this area so that's when they moved in 1981 about 30 minutes drive on the lake and uh, they have both an english garden a baroque garden the kids had a wonderful childhood out there but they still have their offices here There's a building on the right side, which you can see the golden letters at the top, National Museum, the National Museum. And inside that museum, if you decide to go, there's a very nice collection of Russian eggs, Fabergé eggs. It's quite unique to find them outside Russia, but they were given as a gift from a Russian queen called Katarina the Great to a Swedish king by the name Gustav III during the 18th century. If you like international painters, you have uh, Chardin, Rubens, Gauguin, and of course some Swedish artists, Karl Larsson, Bruno Lilia Foch, Anders Zorn, if you are familiar with those names. And by the way, even the Grand Hotel is worth to visit the lobby. And if you need very clean and beautiful washrooms, put on the Grand Look, walk inside the main entrance and you'll find the facilities on the right side this hotel by the way is where the nobel prizes were given before 
And even today, the laureates are staying at the Grand Hotel. But where we have prominent guests like head of states, prime ministers, we always ask them, would you like to stay at the Royal Palace or the Grand Hotel? And 99.9% .9 of the visitors will choose the Grand than to sit in the Royal Palace. But they use the Royal Palace as their offices. So they have offices when they're here for their state visit. And the whole area where the Grand Hotel is, back in the 17th century, it was an island. There was a small river here on the left side that separated the mainland from this island called Blos Yehorman. But because of the land elevation, today, this is actually a peninsula. And we also believe that in two, three hundred years from now, we won't say Stockholm has 14 islands. It will be probably less. Or some new islands will emerge from under the water. The street on the right side is probably the most expensive address you'll find in Sweden. It's called the Seashore Street. And in this building that you see on the right, which is the Seashore Street number one, we had a famous actress that was born, Ingrid Bergman. And we're about to turn left and you'll get to see some of you can see it on the left side and ahead of us, behind this orange truck, that's the Royal Dramatic Theatre, a building that was built in the early 1900s in this style that I mentioned earlier, Art Nouveau or Jugend style. So both Ingrid Bergman went to school here and played.